My name is Dr. Ross Wong, President of San Francisco State University. I have the distinct honor and pleasure of welcoming you to our campus. Those of you in academic regalia may actually remove your hats if you choose. Also, for everyone's convenience, we ask that you please turn off your cell phones before we begin tonight's celebration. I would like to take a moment to thank our San Francisco State University Orchestra student musicians for that beautiful performance. Thank you. Welcome to our 2018 All University Undergraduate Honors Convocation. Tonight, we celebrate the scholarly success and special achievements of our most talented, most determined, and most accomplished San Francisco State students. We share the state with more than 100 of them this evening. All of these students have met the highest standards during their years here, rising to the challenges put to them by our exceptional faculty. They have enriched our lives, for education is, a, is distinctly a two-way process and we trust that we have enriched their lives as well. We want our honor students to know that their achievements have been recognized and we have gathered here this evening to honor them for their exemplary work. We trust they are leaving with an education that has prepared them to own their own mind, live a meaningful life, and contribute to their communities. Attending San Francisco State is more than an education. It's an experience, a true preparation for living a life of principle and value in a chaotic time. Representatives of our university community are here to join us in this convocation. You will meet many of them as the evening proceeds, but I would like to introduce some of them now. And will the following individuals Please stand as I introduce them. Lola Hong, Vice President for Student Affairs and Enrollment Management. Lori Beth Way, Dean of Undergraduate Education and Academic Planning. Deborah Masters, University Librarian. Ilona Vandergriff, Foreign Languages and Literature Professor and University Women's Association Board Member whose members are this evening's official greeters and the host of our reception at the Student Center later this evening. Our two stage marshals, John Carlos Perea, Associate Pre Professor of American Indian Studies, and William Christmas, Professor of English Language and Literature. I would also like to recognize our two faculty marshals, Dorothy Saruta, Professor of Africana Studies, and Kimberly A. Tanner, Professor of Biology. Thank you. <laughs> San Francisco State welcomes some of the most talented students in the world. We introduce those talented students to one of the world's finest faculties, who come to San Francisco State out of a desire to make a real difference in the lives of students through their teaching, scholarly activities, and community service. That interplay between student and faculty affects our future and our relationships with each other. To affirm that relationship each year, the chair of the Academic Senate is asked to address our honorees and our guests. Dr. Nancy Gerber came to the Bay Area in 1993 to do a postdoctoral fellowship in pharmaceutical chemistry and later joined San Francisco State as a faculty member in 1996. She is a professor of chemistry and biochemistry in the College of Science and Engineering and has led the faculty of San Francisco State this past year as chair of the Academic Senate. For two decades, Dr. Gerber has served San Francisco State as a highly respected teacher and an accomplished scholar. 
Her research has included scores of students, especially, especially over 30 undergraduate and graduate students, whose work has resulted in more than 20 peer-reviewed publications and book chapters. More recently, she has been focused on understanding the use of undergraduate students as peer-led instructors in developing labs and demonstrations for general chemistry that can increase students' knowledge and engagement in their chemistry courses. Dr. Gerber is a first-rate teacher and scholar, but she also lends her talents to making the community around her a better place. In short, she is a great citizen of this great university. And I am now pleased to present Dr. Nancy Gerber for her comments this evening. Thank you very much, President Wong, for those wonderful words. Uh, and welcome to all of you, and congratulations to our graduates. So the title of my speech today is The Hitchhiker's Guide to Life After College. So before I begin, it seems reasonable to ask for a show of hands, although I'm not going to be able to see all of you out there. But on the platform, maybe, who in the audience uh, has heard of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, books or movies? Raise the hand. Okay, all right, so we're working with a somewhat unenlightened crowd. That's okay, we're here to learn. I, I can handle that. So for those of you who haven't had the pleasure, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy refers to a couple of different things. So first off, it is a fairly odd five book science fiction trilogy. So again, graduates, what's wrong with that statement? Hopefully you noticed something odd. Um, in fact, the final book is labeled the fifth book in the increasingly inaccurately named Hitchhiker's Trilogy. It's a very irreverent book, as you can see. At any rate, reading Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy gave me one of my first indications that I might actually want to be a scientist. At the time I read the first book, way back in the 70s, I was a high school music and theater geek, and I was convinced that that's what I was going to do in college. I would have been on the floor laughing if you had told me at the time that I might eventually teach, or even tolerate for that matter, the field of chemistry. But science fiction fascinated me, be it The Hitchhiker's Guide, Ray Bradbury, Star Trek, or Cosmos. So the clues were there. Secondly, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is a fictional electronic guide that serves as, and I quote, the standard repository for all knowledge and wisdom, end quote. This is kind of a Wikipedia for the galaxy, long before Wikipedia was a thing. It should be noted that a lengthy entry about Earth has been cut down by the guide's editors to summarize us, Earthlings, as mostly harmless. And if any of you are journalism majors, that might be something you might want to pay attention to. Um, the guide deems a towel to be the most massively useful thing that a hitchhiker can have. The guide's cover also contains the eminently useful advice of don't panic. Uh, I've been using that tonight, by the way. Even if you haven't heard of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you might have heard of Elon Musk, who recently sent his Tesla Roadster worth several hundred thousand dollars into space with a copy of the guide, a towel, and the words don't panic on the dashboard display. So it has infiltrated our culture. In the first book of the series, our somewhat fearful hero, Arthur Dent, finds out that his best friend is from another planet and has come to warn him that Earth is scheduled for demolition to make way for an intergalactic bypass, kind of like a freeway. To escape, they hitch, catch a ride or hitchhike on one of the ships that's targeting Earth for destruction. Thus begins an adventure in which Arthur hicks, hitchhikes around the galaxy with a copy of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and his trusty towel. In the course of his travels, the answer to the ultimate question is revealed. What is the meaning of life, the universe, and everything? Uh, spoiler alert, the answer is 42. Now, I don't expect most, or even some, or perhaps any of you to go hitchhiking around the galaxy seeking the meaning of life, the universe, and everything, assuming that you don't trust the answer to be 42. But I do think that there are some things to be learned in Arthur Dent's journey, and perhaps mine, Sometimes we get so stuck in a place that is comfortable and safe that we forget that there's a world out there that offers unimaginable adventures and opportunities for us to grow. 
As Arthur Dent travels the galaxy, he morphs from a fearful Englishman living in a quiet village in the countryside, never going more than a kilometer or so from his home, to someone very comfortable in his own skin and ready and willing to take on challenges that were unimaginable to him at the start of his adventure. Now, in his case, he had a fairly compelling reason to leave the safety of his home because it was being demolished. But for the rest of us, sometimes the drive for to, new, to try new adventures has to come from within. So as I look back at my own path over the years, I realize that too often I left myself on autopilot, never questioning the direction that I was heading or making any attempt to change it. It took outside events to get me moving in a different direction. A poor performance, a failing grade in a required class, a major I disliked with few opportunities without an advanced degree, a marriage that necessitated moving to a new city. If there's one thing that I wish I had done differently, it would have been to take a moment to look around and really assess my situation. Was I happy doing what I was doing? If I look forward five years from now, where would I be if I followed my current path? And was that really where I wanted to be? If not, could I find the courage to make change? I've been told over the years that it's the things that you don't do that you regret, and I can attest that this is largely true. As I look back to my younger self, I passed over several opportunities because the timing wasn't perfect, and I thought the opportunity would be there in the future. But more times than not, it wasn't. I can also attest to the fact that you students will change from the person you are today. Your interests, abilities, passions will transform in completely unexpected ways. And you have to learn to go with that. But the more you question yourself and the more you get out in the world and seek out new adventures and challenges, the more you will grow as a person and find out what you were truly meant to be. And that person will change over the years. So my advice to you is to be open to and prepared for change, bring a towel, and don't panic. Thank you for listening and congratulations. I jumped ahead and, and there my advice was not taken. All right, and now it is my pleasure to introduce the provost and vice president for academic affairs, Jennifer Summit. Thank you, Senate Chair Gerber, for reminding our graduates and all of us to live adventurously. And graduates, now you can truly say that in college you learned the secret to life, the universe, and everything. Tonight, we celebrate students for their outstanding achievements at San Francisco State. First, we'll honor those students who were inducted as members of Phi Beta Kappa, Next, we recognize 111 undergraduate students who are graduating in the top 1.5% of the students from their academic colleges. Most of them will graduate magna cum laude or summa cum laude. Following them, we recognize 61 undergraduates who have been selected by their academic departments and programs to receive special recognition for excellence in their fields. Among them are six students who have been chosen to represent all of the graduating seniors in their respective colleges because of their outstanding academic achievements and other significant accomplishments that you'll hear about tonight. These six students seated here in the front row will receive the symbolic investiture of the hood at our commencement ceremonies tomorrow. This year marks the 42nd anniversary of the first installation of our Phi Beta Kappa chapter members at San Francisco State. The president of the university chapter is Dr. Masahiko Minami, who is in the audience tonight. Dr. Minami, will you please stand so we can thank you. Phi Beta Kappa, the oldest honorary society in the United States, recognizes students who have successfully demonstrated breadth and depth of study in the sciences, the humanities, and the behavioral and social sciences. The National Society of Phi Beta Kappa established the Omicron of California at San Francisco State University 42 years ago in 1976. Since then, only 950 San Francisco State University students 
have met the requirements to be elected to Phi Beta Kappa out of a pool of more than 194,000 graduating students. I'm proud to introduce the Phi Beta Kappa members who were able to join us here tonight. They were initiated in the, into the Omicron chapter of California in an earlier ceremony. I ask that each student please stand as I call your name and remain standing until all members are named when we can applaud you. They are Hillary Mary Buffin, <laughs> Alexandra uh, Marie Conrad, Shireen, um, uh, Shireen Jafari, and Sammy Hong Tu Kwok. Please join me in congratulating these students for their outstanding academic achievements. You may be seated. I would now like to introduce the Associate Dean of the College of Business, Yimyu Wang, who will present the faculty representatives and students accorded high academic honors from the College of Business. Thank you, Provost Summit. I would like to introduce the chairs and faculty members representing the academic departments in the College of Business and ask them to remain standing until all faculty members have been introduced. They are Teresa Hammond, Accounting, Rex Chung, Decision Sciences, Kiro Chanomas, Economics, Yi Zhou, Finance, O Wu, Information Systems, Robin Simeon, International Business, Nara Zhuang, Management, Fu Nin Ho, Marketing. Please be seated. As I introduce the honor students from the College of Business, I would ask each student please stand and remain standing until all of the students from the category have been presented. Please hold your applause until all the students have been called. These are the students graduating in the top 1.5% of the College of Business. In accounting, Zachary Weiss Assis, Eric Bati, Anna Chen, Kimberly Chung, Megan Elizabeth Larkin, Yu Tong Li, Jane H. Wu, Bonnie Yi. In economics, Mage Cyrus, Persia Ryan. In finance, Lana Salem David, <laughs> Kathleen Fair, Hai Yin Huang, Christine Marie Johnson. In general business, Chloe Spath. In Labor and em Employment Studies, Alisa Pokrovsky. In Management, Jake Van Voorhees. In Marketing, Russell Lawrence Fernando. Tatiana Kotovsvich, Chelsea Chang. Please join me in congratulating our honorees. I would now like to present those students who have been selected by their departments for their special recognition. Megan Elizabeth Larkin, Accounting. Hua Yuen, Decision Sciences. Mage Cyrus, Economics. Hai Yin Huang, Finance. Jing Hua Mai, Hospitality and Tourism Management. Nadine Omei Ibadi, Information Systems. Kona Melissa Kawai, International Business. Alisa Pokrovsky, Labor and Employment Studies. Jake Van Warhees, Management. Chelsea Chen, Marketing. Please join me in congratulating our honor students.
You may be seated. As Provost Summit mentioned, each of the college selects one student to receive the hood tonight on behalf of all its graduates. I am very pleased to introduce this year's hood recipient from the College of Business, Megan Elizabeth Larkin. <laughs> Megan is a lifelong San Franciscan who has always had a passion for working with numbers. She pursued a major in accounting as a way to enhance her knowledge and apply her skills towards helping companies operate in a financially sustainable way. During her freshman year, Larkin joined the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance, VITA, program, a nationally recognized IRS program that provides free tax return preparation to low-income, elderly, limited English proficient, and disabled individuals. During her sophomore year, she became the youngest supervisor in the VITA program. What she valued most about this experience was helping those from underserved communities who came to her with no initial understanding of how to file their taxes. Many of the individuals she assisted were working as independent contractors for real-time ride-sharing business and unaware of the additional tax complications in this gig economy. Larkin helped explain the concepts and implications so they could better plan for their future. Following her junior year, she interned at PricewaterhouseCoopers in their industry tax practice team. She was offered a full-time position at the end of her internship at PricewaterhouseCoopers and will begin in January following the completion of her CPA exam. This summer, she will, she will be joining a labor capital strategies internship program at Georgetown University. In this position, Larkin will help the private equity investment team identify prospective investments and prepare the relevant accounting. Megan, thank you for being a change agent in helping our underserved communities. Congratulations, and we look forward to your successful future. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dean Nancy Robinson, who will present the faculty representative and the students from the Graduate College of Education. Thank you. The Graduate College of Education is pleased to introduce our department chair and faculty representative and I'll call their names. Please stand, and we'll applaud you after you stand up. Um, Dr. Laura Epstein, department chair, and Marsha Raggio, faculty representative in the Department of Communicative Disorders. Thank you. The Graduate College of Education prepares professional educators across the full spectrum of undergraduate, credential, certificate, master's, and education doctorate programs. While teacher preparation is at the heart of the college, we offer programs in many areas, including speech-language pathology, administrators, and education leaders. Tonight, we're featuring the Bachelor of Sciences and Communicative Disorders, our only undergraduate major in the college. This major prepares and provides the foundation to undergraduate study and careers in speech language pathology and audiology, and many other careers in education and human services. I'm pleased to introduce the students who is grad a student who is among the students graduating with high academic honors, Laura Shea. Congratulations, Laura. 
Now I'd like to present the student who has been selected as our departmental honoree, Catherine Moreland. Congratulations, Catherine. And now I'm proud to introduce Olivia Page Connor. <laughs> Ms. Connor is the undergraduate Hood recipient for the Graduate College of Education. And as a high school student at Monterey Peninsula College, Olivia Connor's passions were music, theater, language, and education. She considered many majors. But after observing a speech pathologist in action, Connor realized she'd stumbled on something special, an opportunity to use her passions to help people. She transferred to San Francisco State University, always her dream, and declared her major as communicative disorders and immersed herself in, this, in speech language pathology. As an active leader, Connor joined the campus chapter of the National Student Speech Language and Hearing Association and became an officer. In her junior year, she worked as an aide at a speech and language private practice and later served as a clinical assistant in the San Francisco State's Communicative Disorders Clinic. Her interest in aphasia motivated her to join the Gray Matter Laboratory at San Francisco State, where she continues to work. Connor works with Spanish-English bilingual clients with aphasia and contributes to ongoing research studies. A highlight of her senior year was serving as a mentor for fellow students and sharing her passion for the major. In addition to her extensive in academic involvement and achievements, Connor was also a self-supporting student working in the same supervisor job at a major corporation during the four years of her bachelor's program. After graduation, she'll spend a year as an English conversation assistant in Spain. She then plans to continue her education at the graduate level and looks forward to using her work to create a speech therapy program integrating music and theater arts. Congratulations, Olivia, on your commitment to academic excellence and service to your community. We wish you, wish you much success in your education. Pleased to introduce my colleague, Amy Suyoshi, Dean of the College of Ethnic Studies, who will now present the faculty representatives and honor students from the College of Ethnic Studies. Thank you, Dean Robinson. Uh, good evening, everyone. The department chairs and faculty from the College of Ethnic Studies in attendance tonight are Dorothy Tsuruta, Africana Studies. Donalissa Fisher, Africana Studies. Robert Collins, American Indian Studies. Russell Jung, Asian American Studies. Katinka Martinez, Latina Latino Studies. Eric Pito, Asian American Studies. Jason Ferreira, Race and Resistance Studies. John Carlos Perea, American Indian Studies. And Katrina Rueda Esquibel, Associate Dean. The High Academic Honor Student for the College of Ethnic Studies is Justin Schellmeyer, Africana yeah. Studies. <laughs> the following students are our departmental honorees. Justin Schellmeyer, Africana yeah. Studies. Crystal Roth Sepez, American Indian Studies. Amy Lay, Asian American Studies. Kimberly Mata, Latina Latino Studies. Please give these students a round of applause. It is my honor to now introduce this year's 
Hood recipient for the College of Ethnic Studies, Ariana Quetzal Vargas. She is graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Latina, Latino Studies in the College of Ethnic Studies and a Bachelor of Science in Health Education, College of Health and Social Sciences. Ariana Vargas is recognized for her outstanding leadership and academic achievement during her years as a double major in Latina, Latino Studies and Health Education with a minor in Education. She's extremely bright and also a hardworking student who sets a high bar through her example of community-engaged scholarship and activism. Vargas entered San Francisco State University as a freshman and gracefully carried over her activist and advocacy work from high school into the larger context of the university. She has established herself as a vocal advocate for youth focusing on the rights and needs of underrepresented youth of color and issues of public health in underserved communities. Her many achievements add up to a pattern of leadership and advocacy for progressive change and community empowerment that reflects the core values of the College of Ethnic Studies. Her association with the College of Ethnic Studies began at the tender age of two, when her mother, Venicia Margarita, was a DASA studies major and occasionally attended class with her baby in tow. <laughs> Vargas learned from an early age that education is empowering, as evidenced by her impressive practice of community empowerment through education. Congratulations, Ariana, on an outstanding academic feat of graduating with two majors and a minor. We commend you for your advocacy work in support of our youth in underserved communities that exemplify the important role ethnic studies serves at our university. I would like now to introduce Dean Alvin Alvarez, who will present the faculty representatives and honor students from the College of Health and Social Sciences. Good evening and welcome. Thank you, Dean Tsuyoshi. The department chairs and faculty representatives here tonight representing the College of Health and Social Sciences are, and please stand as we recognize you, Soyan Park, Chair, Child and Adolescent Development. Sharia Taylor, Family Interiors, Nutrition and Apparel. Mary Beth Love, Chair, Health Education. Anthony Mayo, Kinesiology. Larry Vitali, School of Nursing. <laughs> Eric Rosegard, Chair, Recreation, Parks and Tourism. Jocelyn Hermoso, School of Social Work and Marla Ramirez, Sociology and Sexuality Studies. Could you please give them a round of applause? <laughs> the following students from the College of Health and Social Sciences are among those graduating with high academic honors. In Child and Adolescent Development, Regina Myers. In Criminal Justice, Daisy Rojas. Also in criminal justice, Yorleni Cristobal Valencia. I think you have fans out there. In health education, Luciana Silva and Mimi Tan. In kinesiology, Ashley Chan, Corona Huang, Lok Yi Lo. Darina Medunova, Ima Claire Sikat Malig, and in nursing, Kayla Nicole Boyce, Melissa Garza, 
Wansi Lay, Jonathan Lee, and Nicole Ramirez. Please join me in honoring our graduates. Thank you. Our students here tonight who are given special recognition by their departments specifically are Lucia Alvarez, Child and Adolescent Development, Rachel Elizabeth Becerra, Public Affairs and Civic Engagement, Criminal Justice, Savannah Sterling Oki, Family Interiors, Nutrition and Apparel, Mimi Tan, Health Education, Ina Claire Sikat Malig, Kinesiology, Zijun Steffi Liang, School of Nursing, Christina Navarro, Recreation, Parks and Tourism, Justin Gleason, Social Work, and Emmeline Esquival, Sociology and Sexuality Studies. Please join me in applauding them. Thank you. I'm pleased to introduce this year's Hood recipient for the College of Health and Social Sciences, Lucia Alvarez. Woo! Now let me tell you a little bit about her. Lucia received, she is receiving her bachelor's degree in child and adolescent development, but her story goes back to when she was a computer engineer in her native Nicaragua. Lucia immigrated to the United States in 2006 with her 11-year-old son and became a substitute teacher in a bilingual classroom. There she found a passion for teaching and she said, I fell in love with children immediately and that's why I started this new career. Alvarez is graduating from San Francisco State with a bachelor's degree in child and adolescent development with an emphasis on early childhood education. At the same time, she's worked full time as a lead teacher with the Institute for Human and Social Development's East Palo Alto Head Start program. At San Francisco State, she served as a leader and a mentor in the CAD PATH program. Her action research proposal focused on housing insecurity in young children. And she sees early childhood education as something that has effects that reach far, far outside of the classroom. She says, my passion is giving back to the community. And as a teacher, I can support other people who struggle and help them improve their lives. With her degree, she hopes to eventually move on to leadership roles in education, but always with a focus on advocacy for low-income families. Lucia, thank you for incorporating your work, that passion of the need to serve the greater good. Your desire to help our society is applauded and we wish you much success in all the future holds for you. Congratulations. I'm now pleased to introduce my friend and colleague, Dean Andrew Harris, who will present the faculty representatives and honor students from the College of Liberal and Creative Arts. Dean Harris. Thank you, Dean Alvarez. I am so proud to introduce the department chairs and faculty members representing the academic departments and programs for the College of Liberal and Creative Arts. They are and I think this is the point where I tell you not to applaud until I'm done. Christina Rodolo, American Studies. Yeah. <laughs> Meredith Reifschneider, Anthropology. Mario Laplante, Art. Lena Zhang, Broadcast and Electronic Communication Arts. Julian Hoxter, Cinema. Jerry Ann Merrigan, Communication Studies. Dane Johnson, Comparative and World Literature. Roy Conboy, Creative Writing. Yutan Wong, Dance. Mary Hulick, School of Design. 
Anastasia Smirnova, English Language and Literature. Trevor Getz, History. Tanya Augsburg, Humanities. Mahmoud Manchapuri, International Relations. Venice Wagner, Journalism. Mariana Ferreira, Liberal Studies. Mitra Ara, Modern Languages and Literatures. Christine Brandis, Music. Asta Svensdotter, Philosophy. Marcella Garcia Castanon, Political Science. Todd Rorman, Theater Arts. And Julie Hua, Women and Gender Studies. Please join me in acknowledging this array of talented faculty. These are the students from the College of Liberal and Creative Arts accorded with high academic honors. In anthropology, Leah Colby Wade. In cinema, Rahil Ali Mohammed, Deborah Campos, Xenia Fierceva, Rachel Boyong Kim, Jonathan Rowland, Ola Soler, King Jha Sun, Kathleen Steff, and Barbara Ting. In communication studies, Hillary Mary Buffum and Hiroyuki Nakahama. In comparative and world literature, Casey Leidig. In creative writing, Corey Hartwig and Samantha Masters. In drama, Savannah Benedetti and Hillary Mary Buffum. In English, Laura Hannibal, Tiffany Shea, thank you for that, and Madeline Kaylee Aislinn Thompson. In history, Johnny Chow. In international relations, Shireen Jaffari. Please join me in congratulating these outstanding students. You may be seated. The following students have been selected by their departments and programs to receive special recognition for excellence in their respective fields. Again, kindly withhold your applause until I name all the students in this category. Hamed Egbal, Anthropology. Ksenia Fierceva, Cinema. Alexandra Marie Conrad, Classics. Catherine Rivers, Communication Studies. Casey Leidig, Com Comparative and World Literature. Corey Hartwig, Creative Writing. Cassidy Rose Friend, Dance. Oscar Rivas Rodriguez, School of Design. Madeline Kaylee Aislinn Thompson, English Language and Literature. Samantha Masters, History. Sophia Maria de la Luz Wenzel, Humanities. Shireen Jaffari, International Relations. Shiba Bandiba, Liberal Studies. Liao Zhu, Modern Languages and Literatures, Chinese. Casey Leidig, Modern Language and Literatures, French. Jeremy Hebert, Modern Language and Literatures, Japanese. Ashley Feld, Modern Languages and Literatures, Spanish. Christopher Canfield, Music. <laughs> Hillary Mary Buffum, Theater Arts. <laughs> and Tony Eby, Woman and Gender Studies. Please join me in congratulations and applause.
I am honored and privileged to introduce the undergraduate hood recipient for the College of Liberal and Creative Arts, Tony Eby. Tony Eby returned to school to earn a college degree 23 years after she completed high school. In between high school and college, Eby became enmeshed in sex trafficking and suffered repeated physical and sexual abuse. She was addicted to drugs, which led to repeated run-ins with the criminal justice system. Eventually, she was referred to a program for survivors of sexual violence that helped her heal and gave her a fresh start. Since then, she's used her personal experience to inspire and advocate for other survivors of sexual violence, with a particular focus on the LGBTQ community. E.B. came to SF State because she wanted to earn a degree in a field that would complement her life experience, women and gender studies. For the past seven years, she has counseled clients at San Francisco Safe House, a transitional housing facility for homeless women who are leaving sex tra trafficking and other sexually exploitative situations, the very same program from which she sought help 10 years before. She currently works full-time as an outreach and training manager. Majoring in women and gender studies, quote, was definitely one of the best decisions I ever made, she said. I had written that she hopes to continue on to graduate school in social work, but I can now say that she will be continuing on to graduate school in social work to better serve women's communities in our own MSW program in the fall. To <laughs> Tony, we commend you on all you have had to overcome to be here in this moment. Celebrate it. You have richly earned it. Congratulations. And now to present the faculty representatives, representatives and to honor outstanding students from the College of Science and Engineering, I yield the, the podium to Dean Carmen Domingo. Thank you, Dean Harris. The chairs and faculty from the College of Science and Engineering here tonight are Tao He from Mathematics, Gretchen Laboon, Biology, Sirkin Hostin, Mathematics, Hao Yu, Computer Science, Krista Vixi, Chemistry and Biochemistry, Dave Dempsey, Earth and Climate Sciences, Hao Yang, Engineering, Nancy Wilkinson, Geography and Environment, Xing Dong Li, Mathematics, Ron Marski, Physics and Astronomy, and Zena Mello, Psychology. Thank you. The students accorded high academic honors from the College of Science and Engineering are in biochemistry, Vai Mai Han Kao. In biology, Joanne Seslo. In biology, with a concentration in physiology, Alex Jung. In chemistry, Sammy Han Tu Kwok. In computer science, Uzari uh, Nian Mandar. <laughs> In earth and climate sciences, Juliana Matranga. In physics, Noah Skandret. In psychology, Julie Chandler. Sarah Abigail Heller, <laughs> Queen Yang Liu, and Gabriela Parisi. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> the following students have been selected for special recognition as department honorees. Joni Seslo Biology. 
Vai Mai Han Kao Chemistry and Biochemistry. Juliana Madranga, Earth and Climate Sciences. Monique Avila, Engineering. Yeah. Rowena Forrest, Geography and Environment. And Christine Lucia Alar, Mathematics. Yeah. <laughs> Brandon Gunn, Physics and Astronomy. Julie Chandler, Psychology. Congratulations. I am very pleased to introduce Christine Lustria Alar, the undergraduate hood recipient for the College of Science and Engineering. Ms. Alar is receiving her Bachelor's of Science in Mathematics. No, 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 wait, 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 there's more. <laughs> Diane Christine Alar was interested in puzzles from an early age. That interest in problem solving eventually led her to mathematical research. Ms. Alar completed her bachelor's degree in mathematics advanced study in fall 2017 after only seven semesters, less than four years. While at San Francisco State, she worked on mathematics research with Professor of Mathematics Federica Ardila, and also conducted two summers of research through the National Science Foundation's Research Experience for Undergraduates program at Iowa State University and also at the Mathematical Sciences Research Institute at UC Berkeley. She has written two publications based on her work. As a woman in a field dominated by men, she also found a home in Mathematistas, a group of women on campus and other gender minorities in the field of mathematics. There aren't a lot of people, this is her quote, there aren't a lot of people like me in mathematics research, Alar said. She drew inspiration from that group and other programs that brought together students of color in mathematics, and she hopes that she'll be able to create similar programs in careers as a mathematician. Ms. Alar has been admitted to a PhD program in pure mathematics at UC Santa Barbara, where she plans to study algebra and combinatorics. Christine, we honor you and are proud you chose to major in mathematics. We wish you endless success in all your future pursuits. Congratulations. It is now my pleasure to welcome President Wong back to the podium for tonight's closing remarks. Thank you, Dean Domingo. I would like to pause and acknowledge our deans. Let's give each of our remarkable deans a round of applause. For their outstanding support and service to our students, staff, faculty, and the university. Tonight, we have seen what makes San Francisco State such an extraordinary university. We are a public university where our students establish a higher education legacy for their families and generations to follow, and where developing the skills and talents of our students builds a legacy of success for our state, our nation, and our world. Our students are as talented and as exciting a group as you will find anywhere at any university in this country. And their varied backgrounds. <laughs> and I feel proud to ad lib and say anywhere on this planet. 
and their varied backgrounds, cultures, and experiences enhance their excellence. This honors convocation offers an exceptional opportunity to make a large university just a little bit smaller and a little more personal. We've heard a rich array of individual stories tonight as our Hood recipients were introduced. If we had the same opportunity to learn about each student on this stage, we would truly be awed by their courage, intellectual breadth, accomplishments, resilience, and, pers and perseverance. And I want to ask if you would raise your hand if you are the first person in your family to get a college degree. Come on. This has been a proud evening of celebration and recognition of our young scholars. Let me ask you once again to celebrate these outstanding students, soon to be graduates, who have made this such an inspiring evening. And now I'd like to ask our students to stand, if you would. Just for a moment. And I have a reason for asking these students to stand, and the reason is all of you in the audience. We all stand to applaud you, the unsung heroes of our honor students, parents, friends, relatives, children, and mentors who have supported our students through this stage of their lives. Thank you for your investment and that has nurtured these scholars. As you have heard, many of our honors students would not have been successful without your support. Therefore, it seems only appropriate for all of us uh, here on the stage, our honor students and our faculty seated in the audience, to salute all of you families and friends who have guided and, and encouraged these students throughout the years. And will our honorees and faculty please join me in giving round of applause for our audience. Seated. Thank you. This evening, celebration does not end with this ceremony. Thanks to the University Women's Association, we sponsored our first honors convocation 41 years ago and has participated every year since. We are all invited to a reception in Jack Adams Hall at the Cesar Chavez Student Center, and I look forward to seeing all of you there. I now ask that our guests remain seated until our honor students and faculty have left the theater. Students are reminded to stop by Knuth Hall to pick up their award certificates before going to the party. Our 2018 honors convocation has come to a close. As you, our honor graduates, are soon to leave us, know that you go with our love and our confidence. Wherever the next step in your lives takes you, you will forever be part of the Gator family as San Francisco State alumni. And it has been our pleasure and certainly my pleasure to prepare you for what lies ahead. Will the members of the platform party, the honorees, and our university faculty please rise? And would the platform party please join me in exiting the stage?